Hello and welcome to Pluralsight. I'm Don Jones, Curriculum Director for IT Ops Content, and this is your IT Ops Industry Update for Q3 2015. I guess the biggest news right now is out of the European Union where, no, wait, it's the launch of Windows 10. On July 29, Microsoft really pulled out all the stops with a global upgrade party encouraging millions of Windows users to step up to the newest operating system. Remember, if you're a legal owner of Windows 7 or Windows 8, your Windows 10 upgrade is free, although that offer only lasts until July 2016. That's also only applicable, for the most part, to individuals and very small businesses who bought retail versions of Windows 7 or Windows 8. As we all know, most businesses will either pay for their upgrade or get it through software assurance. And we also know that most businesses aren't going to trip over anything in their rush to upgrade to Win 10. But the real news here is for those businesses, because Win 10 is looking like a strong contender to take over from Windows 7. Anyone still running XP? You too, without freaking out your users with an all new, unfamiliar user interface. And there's a strong possibility that Windows 10 will, over time, be renamed to simply Windows, with Microsoft regularly delivering incremental bug fixes and feature updates over time instead of focusing on biannual releases. Those updates, similar in nature to what we already see in Office 365 and Azure, may come as some kind of subscription service, finally moving Microsoft's client OS away from a buy model and over to a rent model. Now, frankly, I've always been a fan of renting, and if you need to know why, go ask your company's CFO or accountant. Renting eliminates depreciation, makes it much easier to scale up or down based on current company needs, and helps to eliminate capital expenditures. I'd rent client hardware, too, for much the same reason. So it'll be interesting to see where Microsoft goes with this and what the market's reaction is over the next few months. Take some advice. Try not to let Windows 7 become Windows XP all over again. Push hard to have your company move on to Windows 10, knowing that it's actually a pretty minimal set of end user and administrative changes at this point. The new OS will, in many ways, seem pretty minor to most people. But it sets a stage for Microsoft to deliver new features and updates in a much smaller, more granular, and hopefully more easily managed fashion. That's the investment here. Better long-term manageability of client devices. Windows 7 is already six years old, and if your business totally skips Windows 10, you'll likely be one of those companies that people kind of laugh and point at for using XP for a dozen years. Yes. Win 7 can likely continue to serve many of your business needs for another half decade or more, but the model Microsoft should be moving toward with Win 10 will make your job a lot easier in the long run. Now, while I'm not saying you should start deploying it today, definitely start putting some plans together with maybe a pilot rollout on the docket for this year. According to Redmond Magazine, some 73% of IT organizations are expecting to push out Windows 10 within the first two years with more than half that number doing so within the first year. Get on board. Along with Windows 10 comes the first officially shipped build of Windows Management Framework 5, including PowerShell 5. Except that this isn't really the first build, because we've had a handful of community technology previews over the past several months. And what's in Windows 10 isn't even the final WMF code. It's still sort of a preview, because we're not expecting the final version 5 code until Windows Server 2016 sometime next year. So, does that mean Microsoft has shipped pre-release code and a released OS? Um, yeah, it does. A little bit. Welcome to the new world order. Oh, and while we're on the subject of new, don't forget that good old Windows Server 2003 has officially become unsupported after more than 15 years of holding down the IT fork. Hopefully, you've moved as many servers as possible to something newer, and in cases where you haven't, tell management to take a lesson. Next time you start negotiating for enterprise software, get a service agreement on vendor timelines to support newer server operating systems. Maybe take a swing at not being stuck on a legacy OS forever. Windows Server 2016 is where we will really see some technology investment from Microsoft with cool stuff like the final WMF5, a new desired state configuration layer, new containerization capabilities, and the stripped down nano server installation option. We'll keep you updated as that story unfolds, 
Although you can already take a peek at Windows Server vNext in Oren Thomas's First Look course, available now to all Pluralsight subscribers. Speaking of courses, we've been busy launching tons of new course series. As of right now, you can get started on your ethical hacking certification, project management professional credential, and numerous refreshed CompTIA titles. I point this out because no matter what you do in IT operations as your day-to-day -day job, it's always a great idea to expand your horizons. With a Pluralsight subscription, it obviously costs you nothing to learn some extra random new stuff that might come in handy one day. Start thinking of your career as a never-ending path of learning and use that subscription to start taking steps in some new directions. If there's one new direction you should definitely be looking in, it's containers. Essentially a kind of lighter weight virtualization, containers promises to make application redeployment and deployment as opposed to OS deployment, which is what traditional hypervisors require, easier, faster, and more flexible. While they're not perfect for every use case, that when they are applicable, they're often better density and easier management. Docker is the big dog on the block for container management, focused on Linux hosted containers, but as I said, Microsoft is coming from behind quickly with its Windows Server containers and Hyper-V containers technologies, both of which will also be Docker manageable. Even Gartner is telling everyone who'll listen to start piloting container-based virtualization in their environments. Don't be left behind on this one. Pluralsight author Nigel Poulton has a Docker deep dive course that's a great place to start. Cloud services are another area to keep your eye on all the time. It's a sneaky, stealthy field where there's constant change. If you look at some cloud services and have some legitimate reasons not to use it today, make sure you look again in three months because I can all but guarantee it'll be different. Case in point, using Azure Active Directory was kind of a pain in the neck because it required awkward dir-sync processes to sync onto your on-prem domains. Now, a lot of people understandably looked the other way when confronted with that project, and even here at Pluralsight, it took a lot of effort to stand up a pilot deployment. But lo, Microsoft releases Azure AD Connect, and the process is now pretty simple. Another example. This past July, Microsoft announced that Azure Site Recovery now supports replication of VMware virtual machines as well as physical servers to the service without the need for System Center. So you can truly use Azure as a cross-platform recovery site for those most critical services. And the idea of Microsoft letting you replicate VMware virtual machines to the Azure cloud, well, it, it makes your head hurt just a little bit, right? So whether your provider is Microsoft, Google, Amazon, or someone else, know that the only constant in cloud is change. And now for a final wrap up of notable tidbits from the past few weeks. At its worldwide partner conference in mid-July, Microsoft announced a new collaboration product called Project GigJam. Tweet me at Concentrated Don if you can think of a goofier project code name from recent history. GigJam is kind of a collaborative data mashup tool. Think of it as a, a connected whiteboard of sorts where you can draw data in from a variety of locations Office 365 organizations should now have access to improved user tracking in the online service. A new application programming interface includes activity reports, PowerShell commands to search activity logs, and broader tracking of user activity. A must-have for organizations dealing with legal or industry compliance, these features should be available now and include tracking across SharePoint Online, OneDrive for Business, Exchange Online, and Azure Active Directory. Look for Skype for Business and Yammer to join the list in a future update. As proof that the world is indeed upside down, Microsoft has released Office 2016 for the Mac in advance of the companion release for Windows. Office 365 subscribers received advanced access ahead of the general release. Microsoft has jumped deeper into the open source world by not only becoming an accepted contributor to the all-important open SSH protocol, but has also kicked in more than $25,000 to become OpenBSD Foundation's first gold contributor. Other contributing heavyweights are like Facebook and Google. If you've enjoyed this update, join me on September 29th at noon Pacific for my inaugural monthly online talk show dedicated to IT operations. I'll interview guests, take your questions, quickly rehash the most recent news, 
and help you keep your IT career pointed in the right direction. You might even find a fun rant or two. Follow at Pluralsight or at Concentrated Dawn on Twitter for details. And if there's a topic you'd like to hear about on future updates, just let me know on Twitter. Until next time, I'm Don Jones, and thank you for joining me here at Pluralsight.